Religious discovery, a missing artifact was found in the closet. This is the true face of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to talk with respect to a part of biblical history that isn't often talked about. Have you ever seen pictures of Jesus, the Virgin Mary, Abraham, or King David from the Bible that showed them with dark skin? If you've only looked at art from Europe, this may come as a surprise. Russia has shown off a group of biblical icons that show these people with darker skin. You might wonder if this is how Russians see the characters in the Bible. It's not true. This discovery is based on real events in history and shows that these icons are not just strange. They are full of important, hidden truths. They provoke profound contemplation on history, faith, depictions, and the diverse forms of religious art. Pay close attention as we talk about this interesting subject. To help us with our work, please like this video, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe for more interesting videos. First, let's talk about Jesus, the most famous person in history. The Bible states in Mark 4.22 that everyone will have access to all secrets. Western art typically depicts Jesus Christ as a man with light skin and long, light-colored hair. However, the Bible doesn't give a clear picture of how he looked. Based on historical evidence, he probably had features common to Jews from Galilee in the first century, like brown eyes and darker skin. Most of what we know about Jesus comes from the Gospels in the New Testament. He was born in Bethlehem and grew up in the area that is now northern Israel. Luke 3.23 says that he began his ministry when he was about 30 years old. However, the Bible doesn't say much about his physical traits other than the fact that he didn't have a unique look. There are no modern pictures of Jesus, and while biblical characters like Saul and David are described as tall and good-looking, there isn't much information about Jesus' appearance. He resembled so many other disciples that Judas had to pick him out. Because the Bible doesn't say much about Jesus' looks, we have to use our imaginations and try to figure out what happened. Why do these figures often look so much alike, and why does this resemblance often match a European face? This makes us wonder if some parts of the Bible were changed or if the writers just forgot to include these details. People have recently scrutinized the traditional image of Jesus as a white European more closely, particularly in the context of racism. Surprising information from Russia has made this scrutiny even stronger, attracting attention from around the world. President Putin's order to move the Trinity icon by Andrei Rublev from Moscow's Tretyakov Gallery to the Russian Orthodox Church is a big change. This move shows how politics and religion are becoming more mixed in modern conversation. From the Bible, the Trinity icon shows Abraham and the three angels at the Oak of Mamre. It was made in the 1400s. The re-emergence of this and other previously hidden or ignored icons has challenged long-held narratives and prompted a new perspective on the portrayal of history and spirituality. After living through a rough past, these Russian icons are more than just religious artifacts. They show a bigger, more inclusive history that includes people of color. Their presence and the stories they tell force us to face historical and religious images and maybe change how we understand them. The discovery of these icons not only improves our spiritual and visual experience, but it also makes us think about how different people have portrayed holy figures in the past. Despite the passage of time and political changes, the discovery and preservation of these religious images signify a reclaiming of history and truth, offering a more comprehensive narrative that acknowledges the diversity of religious images. When these Russian icons are shown in museums like the Castile San Angelo in Rome, we are reminded of the long history they represent. These symbols were once hidden to keep them from being destroyed. Now they are coming out into the open to tell stories of faith, art, and cultural heritage that have never been told before. As we learn more about the discussion surrounding these black biblical figures, we come across a range of interpretations and historical accounts. These religious symbols, which represent Russia's rich religious history, are important in the same way that Egypt's pyramids or Greece's ancient temples are. Their time range, from the 1400s to the early 1900s, gives us a glimpse into Russia's spiritual heart. Because of these revelations, people all over the world are talking about how real the colors of the icons are. Some people say that the pictures are darker now because of time, but supporters like Robert Rubin say that they are darker on purpose to show the real skin color of the people they show. 
The idea that the Israelites and Egyptians of ancient times were black, along with the idea that the Reshet structure in Mauritania was Atlantis, calls for a new understanding of history's geography and family trees. The unaltered Russian icons serve as silent evidence for these claims, demonstrating a historical continuity unbroken by external changes. The discussion of the black characters in the Bible ties into broader themes of migration and diaspora, such as the movement of Jews to Africa and their subsequent dispersal through the transatlantic slave trade. The black biblical icons are more than just religious art. They make people think again about what happened in the past and how complicated racial identity is. Russia's work to protect and show these icons shows a dedication to historical accuracy that challenges popular stories and encourages people around the world to rethink long-held beliefs about biblical history and racial heritage. Russia recently found some old paintings, especially ones from the 1400s that show Jesus, this has renewed people's interest in historical stories. Father Vladimir Ivanov's book, which is full of black icons, opens up a previously unknown part of history by showing how and why black people were present in many places in Europe. With its high price, this book is not only a collectible but also a way to learn about the rich tapestry of black heritage across continents. This is a very rare book that has shocking pictures that make you question what you thought you knew. In Western art, Familiar figures with light skin typically depict the transfiguration of Christ. In this painting, however, the figures are vividly black, which suggests a different historical truth. Mainstream educational stories typically omit such information, particularly in the U.S. This means that a lot of people, no matter what race they are or where they went to school, don't know about the black diaspora's huge impact and legacy. Another powerful example is the crucifixion scene, which is a central event in Christian history. In contrast to the common pictures of a fair-skinned Jesus surrounded by disciples and angels who look like him, this book shows a scene with black people suggesting that they played a major role in biblical events. This departure from the usual imagery underscores the potential discrepancies between historical memory and actual events. People like Alex Pismany have said that following Byzantine orthodoxy and its iconographical canon means showing religious figures like Christ and the saints in a way that is consistent and doesn't change based on historical and cultural truth. Iconography adheres to traditional styles and rules, demonstrating the importance of preserving history and allowing diverse representations within these established frameworks. The discovery of black biblical icons from Russia not only adds a new and interesting layer to our knowledge of art and history, but it also makes us think again about our cultural and racial identities in the context of world heritage. As more shocking information comes out from Russia, the global conversation about how to accurately and fairly portray history picks up speed. Recently, activists in the U.S., like Sean King, have asked for the removal of Confederate statues. This has led to a debate about religious icons, especially those that show Jesus as a white man. This criticism of traditional images is part of a larger attack on how religious and historical images can keep racial bias alive. King agrees with many scholars and religious leaders who say that the common portrayal of Jesus as white not only changes the facts but also supports white supremacy. He points out that the Bible says that when there was danger, Jesus' family ran away to Egypt, a place where they could blend in, which suggests that they looked more like people from the Middle East than Northern Europe. The opposition to King's comments, particularly from conservatives, demonstrates the intensity of this debate. However, his advocacy for the removal of white Jesus images from public spaces demonstrates the growing desire among people for more historically accurate and inclusive portrayals of religious figures. King's reference to a popular mechanics article that shows a darker-skinned Jesus based on historical and scientific research challenges long-held beliefs and prompts a fresh look at the images that are important to the Christian faith. In America, during the time of slavery and segregation, people insisted on a white Jesus. This shows how religious symbols can be used to support and justify oppressive systems. By pushing for the removal of these kinds of images, activists like King are not only trying to fix the past, but also making people face how the past 
still affects the way race is dealt with today. In the middle of the heated debate about how to represent Jesus and the larger debate about racial justice, Jenna Ellis, a lawyer who works for President Trump, spoke out against what she saw as an attack on Christianity. Sean King, however, suggested that Ellis might have been advocating for a concept of Christian whiteness, which he asserts has a deep connection to the concept of a white Jesus. King's statement highlights a crucial issue. The intertwining of racial identity and religious symbols leading to the perception of questioning the latter as an assault on one's faith and identity. In the past few years, there has been a big movement to rethink historical figures and symbols, especially those connected to the Confederacy and colonialism. This movement, which involves destroying or removing statues, has started a conversation around the world about how to tell the truth about history and the effects of systemic racism. Some people say that these kinds of actions are like mob rules, while others say that they are necessary to fix wrongs from the past. In the UK, this debate has hit home in the Church of England. Archbishop Justin Welby, the leader of the Church of England, has said that the way Jesus is portrayed needs to be looked at again. In his reflections, Welby brings up the different ways that people in different cultures have shown Jesus. He also makes the theological point that these different pictures of Jesus are just representations and not the things that people worship. This broader re-examination includes historical landmarks. For instance, Canterbury Cathedral is examining the locations and purposes of its statues. People like Sean King have started conversations, and people from all walks of life have responded. This shows that people are becoming more aware of and willing to face uncomfortable truths about history and representation. Disagreements regarding the portrayal of Jesus and the narrative of history reveal a significant issue with conventional thinking. It calls for a more nuanced and inclusive view of history, one that takes into account how different people's lives are and how religious figures like Jesus are the same for everyone. The appearance of black icons in Russia and subsequent discussions around the world have sparked this reevaluation, making people and organizations think again about the stories that have shaped their understanding of history and identity. Getting through these tough arguments, it's becoming clearer that the way to truth and peace is to be ready to face the past, no matter how painful it may be, and to look for a more complete and inclusive understanding of our shared heritage.